previously on Haunted. Vanderburg Academy is a boarding school. Your parents pretty much have to be richer than God for you to get in. Who's this Kayla that you were speaking to and how do you know she's reliable? Rachel and Professor Carlton both had run-ins with a girl named Linda Kleinfeld, but she goes by the nickname Raven. If James was going to pretend to be a teacher, I figured I should go undercover as a student. Do you know if you'll be with us for a long time, Professor Hunter? I'm Marcus, by the way. Abigail. Don't go around blabbing about stuff like that where the staff can hear you. That's a really pretty necklace, Raven. What is it? Like a little pyramid? It's just costume jewellery. Perception directly affects our reality. I mean, there are accounts of people being able to focus their thoughts into creating thought forms that act with some degree of autonomy. Are you referring to the Jewish myth of golems? I'm thinking more of tulpas. Hello, Marcus. My gosh, what happened to your nose? There's blood everywhere. Haunted, the audio drama. Episode 4. The Lonely Shadows. Part 3 of 4. Written by Jamie Evans. Sit down, here, sit. Let me have a look at your nose, Marcus. It's fine, Reverend Corbin. Looks much worse than it is. The bleeding has stopped. What caused such a thing? Did somebody attack you? Shall I call somebody? No, Reverend, please. We just wanted to talk to you, if that's okay. Of course. That's what I'm here for. We wanted to ask you about God. You believe in him, don't you? I've dedicated my life to spreading his gospel, so I would say so, yes. Do you really believe, though? Not in the church, but in a God that created all things. Yes, I do. Why? How would you feel if you met God? If you came face to face with your creator? Uh, that's an unusual question. I, um, I guess I don't really know. I suppose I would be grateful for the life he has given me for all of the good things that he creates. Is that all you would feel? No, I think I would feel lots of things. Awe at the prospect of meeting the creator of all things. Joy, too. And I suppose a a little anger, if I'm being honest. For all of the bad things he lets happen. That's right. I do believe in his omnipotence, And I do believe all things to be part of his design. But I cannot pretend I'm not human. I see sickness and disease, crime and disasters, and it makes me angry. I think I would ask him why he lets things like that happen. What if you met your creator and he was horrible? What if he hated you for being you? I can't imagine something like that. God is the embodiment of love. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. If it were true, why would he have given us free will in the first place? Why would he give us that only to judge us so harshly? What could you do if you knew God hated you? I don't believe God is capable of hating anybody. Guys, is there something you want to tell me? It seems very clear that something is bothering you. This is a safe space. You should feel free to talk to me. No, no, don't worry. They can wait. You two have my full attention. Sorry, please. I'll just be one moment. Mr Hunter? Is Abigail with you? No, I haven't seen her for a while. Come in, this is... Oh, What is it? There were two students here a moment ago. Marcus and Natalie. They must have left out the other door, but but why? What did they want? Never mind that right now. We need to find Abigail. Hang on. Come on. Come on, you never put the thing down. Answer it! Abigail... What's up? You've reached the voicemail of Abigail Corbin. 
Please leave a message after the tone. Damn! Do I need to be worried? I sent Abigail to investigate the kitchen. I assumed she'd come back at some point, but she didn't. We should split up and look for her. Yes, good idea. No, bad idea. We still don't know what's going on here. Be that as it may, we have a lot of ground to cover. I'm going over to the dormitories to see if she's there. You two, take care of this building. I'll take the west wing. Can you look over the east? Here, this is my number. Call me if you find anything. OK, I'm on it. What is it? Cheryl's disappearing students. I wonder where they went, or why they left. Never mind. No time now. Shoo! Excuse me, have you seen a young woman? Uh, this high, brunette hair? Excuse me. Oh, uh, excuse me, sir, have you seen a new student around today? Uh, this high, somewhat annoying, doesn't stop for breath when she talks. Ugh. What's going on? Excuse me, what's going on? I think she hit her head. What's she doing in the boys' room? Everybody, out of the way, right now. Let me through. Abigail, please, wake up. Are you okay? Oh, what? James? Thank you, Lord. Oh, you're squeezing me too hard. Sorry. Here, I sit against the wall like this. <sighs> Mind the broken glass. Abigail, what happened here? I went to the kitchen, like you said. Somebody had been in the cupboards eating all the snacks and, and they ran away before I could see who it was. I followed them and, and then I heard noises from in here. The voices. I poked my head around the door and, and, th and that boy, Marcus, came charging out. His nose was bleeding heavily, like, like someone had bust his nose. Marcus, she said, uh, hangs around with a girl called Natalie. Uh, yeah, that's right. One second. <sighs> Did you see anything unusual? Nothing much. Mrs Corbin, I've found her. Can you meet us at the infirmary? I don't need the infirmary. I I'm fine. I'll see you there. Are you able to stand? Yes, I'm not an invalid. I'm, I'm just a bit dizzy. Take it easy. No need to rush. I heard something, James. Right before I lost consciousness, something sounded like it was in here, whispering to me. Possibly your attacker. It didn't sound human. OK, let's not cause a panic with all these people watching. <clears throat> Please clear the corridor, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to help Abigail here to the infirmary. Clear the way, please, that's right. Abigail, are you all right? I'm fine, Mum. She's going to be fine, Mrs Corbin. She passed out in the bathroom. The boys' bathroom. What were you doing in there? One of the students, Marcus, was in there crying out in pain... I just went to see if I could help, and he ran past me, and his face... Was his nose bleeding? It was. I think I saw him right after. Thank you for finding her, Mr Hunter. Please. Do you know what might have caused her to faint, Doctor? Looking at your vitals, you're a very healthy young woman, for the most part. The only thing I can see is that you're quite dehydrated. Dehydrated? Yes. Abigail mentioned that she had a dull headache for the last few days which can increase in pain at times. That's right. It's very likely this is also caused by dehydration. Lack of fluid can cause the shrinkage of the brain dura, and this is the membrane that encases the brain, thus putting pressure on the organ and causing headaches. It is the same reason why people suffer hangovers the morning after the night of drinking. You think you'd know that? Hey, don't point at me. She should get plenty of rest and increase her fluid intake. Other than that, I would be happy to release her. I don't mind you chasing all about the country with Mr Hunter, Abigail, but please promise me that you will look after yourself. Drink plenty of water. Take your vitamins. Things like that. I promise, Mum. I thought I drank plenty of water today, but I guess I was wrong. Come in. It's me. I heard you guys were... Oh, what happened? I had a little faint, that's all. Are you OK? Did you hit your head? Dehydration. Just prior to that, Abigail saw a young man named Marcus. His nose was bleeding. Marcus? Did somebody punch him? I don't think so. He and his... girlfriend? They came to see me. They were very scared and acting strangely. I don't think they're together. I don't know. They seem pretty close at lunch. No, I'm sure they're not. 
This isn't the point. The point is there is clearly something strange going on with this duo. We need to find them and talk to them. I know where their dorm rooms are. Excellent. Can you show me? Abigail, get some rest. Are you okay to stay with her, Mrs Corbyn? Of course. And Cheryl, please. I'm fine with Mrs Corbyn, actually. Will you be okay? I'm fine now. Just give me two minutes to get up and get changed. No, it's okay. We won't be long. Take it easy. I'm serious. I can get right out of bed and... Abigail, no. Rest. You won't miss anything. I promise. What, Mum? Why are you looking at me like that? You're trying to impress him, aren't you? (laughs) Don't be silly. Honey, of course you are. He was your hero growing up. Remember I was there for your childhood. I was there when you bought his first book home from the library. And I was there for every paperback you brought afterwards. It's only natural you would feel a need to impress him. Do you think he remembers meeting you at that book signing? I was 14, Mum, and I very much doubt it. I don't think he remembers much of anything these days. He drinks a lot, doesn't he? I think he's probably a very sad person on the inside. Mum, don't try and psychoanalyse. What did Marcus and his girlfriend want when they came to see you? It was very strange. They were asking me all about God and what if I found out he wasn't a very nice being? Of course, I told them I believed God to be the most loving of all beings. Marcus had a bloody nose, as you've said. When I went to open the door to James, by the time I came back, they were just gone. I met their friend in the cafeteria earlier as well, a young woman named Raven. Do you know her? Ah, yes, I know Raven. I hadn't realised the three of them were friends. Perhaps I need to be more observant. Does she get into a lot of trouble? Did she have a particular problem with Professor Carlton? You were never going to just rest, were you? Mum, please. This is too important. Yes. There was an incident between Raven and Professor Carlton. It was a few weeks ago. Professor Carlton had been in a shitty mood for a couple of days, no clue why. Raven tried contributing to one of the class discussions, but the professor didn't think her contributions were relevant to the topic at hand. She dismissed them outright. Raven argued back and Colton shouted her in front of the whole class. That doesn't sound so bad. Teachers shout at students all the time. No, no, no. Colton made it personal. Most of the students at this academy get in because of their wealthy parents, right? They buy their way in. The only way for kids from poorer economic backgrounds to get in is via a scholarship. That's how I got in. It's how Raven got in as well. Some people here think that scholarship programmes shouldn't exist at all. They think poorer children should simply be excluded from attending Vanderburg. Hmm, sounds like a lovely woman. This Raven, would she be capable of causing trouble? Definitely. We we used to be friends. We were both really into your work and just researching this sort of stuff, you know? So what happened? Raven wanted to start actually practising some stuff. Please tell me you said no. Well... Of course you didn't. When someone asks you to take part in any kind of occult business, you just say no, okay? It's like drugs. Well, most drugs. Well... You're taking another drink. (sighs) I needed that one. Are you blaming yourself? I don't know what you mean. For Abigail. She's more than an apprentice or an assistant, isn't she? She's your friend. Well, those have been in rather short supply lately. I've been worried about her. Lately, she's not acting right. She she thinks I don't notice, but I do. Now they're telling us she's dehydrated, probably getting distracted by all of this, but I should have noticed sooner. She's a grown woman. And I should have taken some responsibility. Hang on, we're here. This is Marcus's room. Does he have a roommate, do you know? I don't think so. He only started at the beginning of this term. I think they stuck him in a spare room. Keep a lookout. I'm going to let myself in. Kayla. What? Look at this. Oh, God. It's been ransacked. No. It looks that way, but there's order to it. Look at that space there beneath the bed. Lots of other things stuffed under there with one conveniently suitcase-sized space. Then look at what's actually been opened. The wardrobe and those drawers over there. 
I bet he came in, grabbed the case and started packing. Just the essentials with the looks of it. He's doing a runner. Where's Natalie's room? This way. Here, drink some of this. Come on. The doctor said you need plenty of water. Do you have any paracetamol? Is your head still hurting? Yeah, it's starting again. I have some in my office. Will you be all right here? Yeah, of course. I'll be right back. The grounds of the Academy were chilly that afternoon. Hardly surprising given the time of year and Vandenberg Academy's elevation on the side of a small mountain. Still, I like the chill. Its sharp edge made me feel refreshed, more alert. More me. My mind was racing with thoughts, trying to piece together what had happened. The dead professor, the bullied schoolgirl. That all seemed logical, but there was no way a human being could have killed the victims. What are you doing? Huh? What? Your drawing. I looked down where Raven was pointing. She was right. Lost in my own thoughts, I had picked up a stick and was drawing in the soil of the flower bed with it. They were just doodles, just random patterns of concentric circles and old slashes. Although, was there a pattern to them? A method to seeming chaos? I hurriedly used my hand to disturb the soil and erase the patterns, but it was too late. Raven had seen. She was looking at me with an eyebrow slightly raised, her lips a little apart, like she was sizing me up. Listen, I'm sorry I got funny with you earlier. It's okay, I'm, I'm sorry for prying. Things haven't been great here lately. Yeah, I can tell. I know who you are, by the way. It took me a moment, but I remembered you. Who am I? You're Abigail Corbin. I listen to your podcast. Oh, thank you. It sounds like you're a bit of an expert on the weird and wonderful. I've been getting some first-hand experience lately, yeah. I know what that's like. Can I trust you? Of course. With what? My friends and I, we need help. This one's empty too. Things are missing as well. I suspect Natalie's gone with Marcus, wherever that is. What are you looking for? Snacks. If you're hungry, we can swing by the kitchen. Not for me. Abigail caught someone stealing from the kitchen, wolfing down food, she said. I wondered if the thief may also be bringing some back to their dorm rooms. You think it could be linked to the murders? Possibly. This girl you were telling me about, uh, Raven, you said you and her got into the occult. I thought we were just playing around, I swear. The truth is, neither of us were that good at making friends. It was a shared interest that brought us together. At first, we would just listen to podcasts or read books, but, but then Raven wanted to try doing some of it herself, you know? Just really low-level stuff. Hardly any of it worked. Or at least, we couldn't prove it worked. Such as? Creating good luck charms. We both had this exam due and neither of us had studied, so we did a good luck charm from this book of spells she found. Both of us did end up passing the exam despite not studying. That doesn't prove anything. Maybe you're just smarter than you think you are. Yeah, maybe. So then Raven wanted to take it further. She wanted to use the book to create something. In the classroom, you mentioned golems and tulpas. Is that what you meant? Yes. If. If it were possible to create and maintain a thought form like that, well, that would take considerable reserves of energy. That might explain our snack thief. I pretty much stopped talking to Raven after that. I didn't want to get involved, but I've got some of the books still. Do you want to read them? Yes, that would be fantastic. Let's hurry. Ah, wait, no, I, I want to go to the classroom first. I left my briefcase in there and it's got some of the documents we need. Come on. Wow, this looks a lot like my room back home with all these books. Thanks. I've been interested in this stuff for as long as I can remember. I didn't really have many, you know, friends. Yeah, I know what you mean. Have you ever seen anything supernatural? Anything you were 100% certain was supernatural? Nothing I can prove, but I believe I have, yes. Ever heard of tulpas? Golems? Funnily enough, there was a girl who mentioned them in class today. What if I told you it was real? That it was possible to focus one's own willpower on creating a new thought form and giving it life. Why wouldn't everyone do something like that? You'd never be lonely. Firstly, because it is super difficult to do. It takes a toll on the creator. Secondly, we're talking about more than simple slaves here. 
This isn't guaranteed affection or a connection. I'm talking about creating life. And you think this is possible? I think I've done it. But can you have... Come in. Natalie, come in. Where's Marcus? He went to get the professor, James Hunter. What do you mean he went to go get him? What's going on here? I need to go. No. Door's locked. You won't get out before we get to you. Listen to me, Abigail. We just need to talk. Your boyfriend better not hurt James. Do you understand me? What are you looking for? This, right here. Look at this. This is a complete register of all the students at this school. Here's the thing. Abigail and I counted during the assembly. There were more students in the assembly than there are on the list. I just wanted to be sure. Uh, aha! Neither Marcus nor Natalie are on the list. They aren't students of Vanderburg Academy. She did it. She actually managed to do it. We think. It's possible these two are just a couple of psychos who your friend is hanging out with. When you said she wanted to try creating one of these tulpas, why did you fall out? If you were doubting that her spells would work, why would you bother? Surely she couldn't do any harm. Because she met this man, this creepy man. He gave her something, an artefact that he promised was very old and very powerful. It's used to focus and magnify thoughts, allowing the user to keep a portion of their mind focused on one specific task. It's a small prism that she wears around her neck, he called it the Pythagorean prism. Who was this man? I don't know. Kayla? I promise, I don't know. I think I have an idea, a way to prove it. Raven might be smart, but she's still just a teenager. She's still new to this. Even if the artifact helped her to create living beings, they aren't quite human. They're still thought forms. There's likely something she missed. Something... I'm sorry to interrupt, Professor. What are you doing here? Marcus. What are you doing here? I'm helping Mr Hunter. So, you've put your lot in with her, have you? That's a shame, sir. A real shame. We thought you were going to help us. I'm afraid I can't let you continue. Oh, wonderful. Starring Jamie Evans as James Hunter and Isabella Barbieri as Abigail Corbin. With special guest Tess Gusted as Cheryl Corbin. Also featuring Madeline Rigby, Faith Everett, Alice Ryan, Rachel Calton, Tom Bentley, Benton Hodges. Narration by David Anthony Green. Opening and closing themes by James Crow. Haunted, the audio drama, is created by Jamie Evans, with all episodes produced and directed by Jamie Evans and Benton Hodges. Audio engineering by Benton Hodges, Charles Topping and Jamie Evans. Haunted is a production of Impala Films and is recorded at Free Sprite Media Studios, with special thanks to Duncan Newham for equipment support. Thank you for listening to this audio presentation. Come back next week for the next terrifying chapter of Haunted, the audio drama. Hi, this is Jamie Evans. And Benton Hodges. We're the producers of Haunted, the audio drama. We hope that you've been enjoying the show and we encourage you to keep track of our goings on by following our social media accounts. We've got a growing fan community who enjoys sharing theories, fan art and generally discussing the show. Plus, it's a great way for you to keep up with all the latest news about Haunted and our future projects. Follow us on Twitter at The Impala Films, on Instagram at Haunted Audio Drama, or one word, no capitals, or you can find us on Facebook at Impala Revolution. Enjoy the show and hungry for more? You can find us on Patreon at Impala Films, where you can donate to the show and get rewards such as early access to episodes and a behind-the-scenes podcast that goes through the myths and legends that inspired Haunted. Lastly, please consider leaving a review on your podcast app of choice. It really does help us reach more listeners. Thank you so much to every one of you for listening to our little show. It means so much to us. Yeah, the reception has totally blown us away. 
Thank you for listening and we will see you next time. <laughs>